Welcome to Becoming Mind Strong, the official podcast of Mind Strong Fitness. My name is Rachel. I'm the owner and head coach of Mind Strong Fitness, and I am here to teach you truth. No more bullshit, no more point systems, no more shakes, no more raps. This is math and science, and we're going to learn how to do it together. Ready? Let's rock and roll. Welcome to episode four of Becoming Mind Strong, and today we are talking about the single biggest mindset shift that you can make to be successful in health and fitness. In fact, you know what? Scratch that. It is the single most important mindset shift you can make to be successful at anything in your relationship, in your business, in your health and fitness journey. This is the single most important mindset shift to success, period, hard stop. I don't care what the topic is. And that mindset shift is this, get out of the all in all out mindset. And we're all familiar with it, right? This is why relationships are hot and heavy in the beginning and fizzle out. This is why businesses come into existence with a bang and then fizzle out. This is why you're either killing it hard in the gym four days a week, or you're seeing how long it physically takes you to mold into your couch. It's why you've been spot on with your nutrition all week, but then you had that one slice of pizza. So why not have four more because you blew it already? Society has has grown us to this place where we believe it is all or nothing. You're either on your diet or off. You're either killing the fitness game or you're starting again next week or next month or next year or name some arbitrary deadline of when we quote unquote get back on. The single best thing you can do to see success, whatever success means to you, is to get out of this all in, all out mindset. I saw this great meme once. It was beautiful. It was this lady jogging through the woods on this clear path. And it said, if you're tired of starting over, stop giving up. And the way that I translate is this, stop fucking stopping. (laughs) That is the answer. There are days you're going to kill it. There's going to be days you mess up. There's going to be days that you're totally on your nutrition. And there's going to be days where you house a whole pack of donuts. There's going to be weeks where you're killing it in the gym and days where tying your shoes feel like a lot of work. This is part of the game. This is part of the process. But the problem is we've set this arbitrary rule of if I do this, it means this, right? If I eat a slice of pizza, that means I failed. Now it's, it's, it's game over. Doesn't matter what I do. If I miss a workout in the gym, the week is ruined, and now I have to start all over again on Monday. These are all bullshit rules. This is stuff that we have made up, and we've decided our truth with a capital T, when in reality, these rules don't exist. These are rules that we've made up in our brains, and we live to them. We will die on our sword. So there's a few ways that we can go about making this mindset shift. The first one is just acknowledging it, right? We call that shining the light of awareness on it. Acknowledging that we have been living in a state of all in, all out, and even more importantly, acknowledging that it's bullshit, that it is a rule that we have made up, right? We've read about it in fitness magazines. We've seen it modeled for us, and we've accepted it as truth. But nowhere in this universe... Does that truth exist except in your mind? So part of it is just a mindset shift that we are consciously making. We are dedicating ourselves to no longer being all in, all out. From there, there are some actionable steps that we can take, and that's what we're going to dive in today, is is how flexibility gives us leeway to not think so black and white, to not be so all in, all out. And there's, there's tips and tricks we can use when it comes to our nutrition and flexibility, when it comes to our workouts and flexibility, when it comes to every area of our health and fitness journey. Now, keep in mind, and for the purposes of this podcast, we're talking about health and fitness, but this is true in any area of your life, right? Anyone out there that owns a small business or has ever done anything in the business world, you know that if, if failure meant game over, We would never be, there would not be a single business on the face of the earth that is still thriving because part of the game of having a business is trying over and over and over again. And you build up this launch for weeks and months and and the big moment arrives and it fails miserably. And in that moment, if we were to just say, well, that didn't work time to close shop, there would not be a single business left. But the reality is that quote unquote failure is simply information. What do you do when you own a business? You take a step back. You say, okay, interesting. Parts of that did not go as planned at all. (laughs) Parts of that went better than planned. And, And you gather all the information you can, good or bad, and you do it again, and you do it again, and you do it again. And as long as you keep tweaking and you keep adjusting, and most of all, as long as you don't stop, 
you will be successful. It's the same thing with our relationship, right? If every single time you had an argument with your spouse, if that was it, game over, there would be no marriages. There would be no relationships in this world because part of the game is learning. It's tweaking. It's adjusting. And the same thing is true when it comes to your health and fitness journey. If every time you quote unquote mess up, whatever mess up means to you and and the arbitrary rules that we've set, right? If that means eating something not aligned with your goals, if that means missing a workout, whatever mess up means to you, if every time you are quitting when that happens, you are never, ever, ever going to be successful. But when we make this mindset shift and we accept the fact that this path is not linear, we have this misconception in our head that it's like day one, I've started my health and fitness journey, and now it's this perfectly linear path. If we looked at it on a bar graph, it's going up, up, up of my progress. And that is complete bullshit. That is not, it's more like this jagged, crazy little circles with ups and down and loops that we don't even understand what they mean. Because that's life. Life happens. There is never going to be a person in this universe who has a quote unquote perfect path to anything. There's going to be days you eat food not aligned with your goals. There's going to be days you miss workouts unexpectedly. But when you learn to be flexible, when you learn to give yourself permission, when you learn to give yourself grace, that's when we can get out of this all in all out mindset. And that is when we create sustainability. So let's start with nutrition. And this is probably the biggest area where this all in all out mindset comes from, right? We, we just crush it with our nutrition. We're eating quote unquote clean. We're eating all the quote unquote right foods. We're doing everything right. And suddenly you walk into the workroom and there are donuts, the bane of your existence, <laughs> the crush of your willpower donuts. I'm speaking for myself right now. So you have a donut, right? You tell yourself, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't. And then you cave and you eat the donut. And what happens? You say, well, I already ruined it, right? I already threw in the towel. So what does it matter? And you go on to eat two or three donuts. And then later that day you say, well, I already messed up. So why not have some pizza for dinner? And after that piece of pizza, you say, well, I already had donuts and a piece of pizza. So why not just keep going? So you have two more pieces of pizza and a pint of ice cream. And now the snowball effect is is in full charge. And it all started with one little donut that did not have to mean anything other than you enjoyed a delicious, delicious donut. The key to nutrition is this. The more you tell yourself you can't have something, the more you restrict, the more you say, no, 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 that's a bad food, that's off limits, the more you are setting yourself up for failure. And as we've discussed at length already, and we're going to talk about a whole lot more, the more you get into this can, can't, good, bad, all, nothing mindset, it's never going to last. It is never going to last. The key to nutrition, the key to all of this, but for purposes of our conversation right now, the key to nutrition is flexibility. And this is where I am such a fan of macro tracking. And by the way, macro tracking is also called flexible dieting. I don't use that term a lot because I don't like the term dieting. It has a negative connotation. And dieting, to me, sounds like going on a diet. Flexible dieting or macro tracking is about diet in terms of way of eating. When we say flexible dieting, we're not saying go on a diet. We're talking about the diet that you eat each day, the way you eat. So macro tracking is called flexible dieting for this exact reason. When you track macros, you're tracking your carbs, fat, and protein. It's a more detailed way of calorie counting. It's beyond the scope of this podcast, but it's something that we have talked about and will talk about in detail throughout the episodes ahead and behind us. When you track macros, there are no longer foods that are good or bad, that are off limits or okay, that are allowed or are are banished from our daily lives. It's all about flexibility. As long as you hit your personal numbers, your carbs, fat, and protein each day, you can eat the foods you love. Of course, we want to make nutritious choices the majority of the time, but there's still room for that donut, right? And as a coach, my clients can't believe I say this to them all the time, but I am a fan of if you love donuts the way I do, I encourage you to eat a donut now and then. I encourage you to fit that donut into your macros. Because if you're sitting there week after week and after week after week telling yourself, I can't eat a donut, I can't eat a donut, we already, we know where that's going to lead. You are going to cave and you're going to eat six donuts instead of one donut. But if you've given yourself that grace, if you say, you know what, I really want a freaking donut today. 
and you fit one in your macros, no harm, no foul. You're still aligned with your goals. You're still hitting your macros. You chose to spend because macro tracking is a lot like budgeting. You chose to spend some macros on that donut that day and you keep on going. It's all about flexibility. Flexibility equals sustainability and sustainability equals results. And the single best way to do that when it comes to nutrition is to not label foods as good or bad, not label foods as off limits or allowed. The second you say, I can't eat something, your craving just got a hundred times worse. But when you give yourself permission, when you say, you know what, do I choose to spend some of today's calories, some of today's macros on that donut? It's a choice. Sometimes simply giving ourselves permission is enough. Then we're like, you know what, now that I think about it that way, don't really want to spend it that way. It's like spending money, right? Yeah, I want to go out and buy everything in sight. But then when I actually hand you the $100 and say, okay, go for it, spend it on whatever you want. Well, now you have a choice. Do you really want to spend it on that? Do you really need that item? And if the answer is yes, go buy it. And if the answer is no, you have a choice. And when we go into nutrition with that same mindset that it's always a choice, that it's never about restriction, that is how we create a sustainable lifestyle. This works the exact same way with workouts. The biggest reason, in my experience, the biggest reason that people don't start a workout routine or fall off their workout routine is overwhelm. They feel so overwhelmed by this blanket statement of, I need to get in a workout routine, right? What does that mean? If you ask someone, what does that mean to get into a workout routine? They either don't know, or it's so much bigger than it has to be. Well, I have to be in the gym five to six days a week. I have to have an hour and a half that I can devote to doing this. And I have to lift super heavy weights and I'm really weak. So I can't do that. And I don't have the time and I don't have that many days in a week. Well, of course you're not starting. That sounds super overwhelming. The key to sustainability with workouts, again, is inflexibility, right? If the blanket statement of getting in a workout routine sounds overwhelming to you, we need to stop, breathe, and get clear on what's comfortable. There is no right or wrong to this. These are all arbitrary rules. Who said that it has to be five to six days in a week? Who said it has to be an hour and a half? Who said that you have to be deadlifting your body weight to see results? Right? Yes, there's truths to workouts. We want to be pushing our muscles to do what they can't currently do. But what that means for me and what that means for you and what that means for your best friend are totally opposite things. And that's okay. So the first thing we need to do is get some clarity. Well, how many days a week do you want to work out? What's realistic for you? Because right now, if the answer is I'm working out zero days a week, then one is a great start. Two is a great start right? If you have kids at home and a full-time job and a spouse and the thought of an hour a day in the gym just sounds totally unrealistic to you, well, guess what? If you're doing zero minutes a day right now, then a 20-minute walk sounds like a hell of a good start to me, right? Maybe a time commitment isn't, isn't your issue. Maybe you're just like, I feel like if I go to the gym, I have to do so many exercises and I don't know that many exercises, so I don't know what to do and I just don't know where to start. So maybe instead of the goal of a 20 minute workout, you set a number of exercises. You know what? Today I'm going to do three exercises. I don't, I don't really know what to do. So I'm going to go on YouTube. I'm going to pick out three exercises that look fun. I'm going to do them today. That's it. When those three are done, my workout's done tomorrow. Maybe I'll do the same three. Then maybe I'll get bored of them and I'll pick another three. This is how we start. It is not this all or nothing. I have to be crushing in the gym six days a week for an hour and a half and doing deadlifts and bench press and squat. No, who decided that? That's an all in all out mindset. The truth is, if you're doing zero right now, then one or two days is great. If you're doing zero minutes right now, then 20 minutes is fantastic. If you're doing zero exercises right now, then three exercises a day is awesome progress. It is not all or nothing It is about starting. And here is why this is so, so freaking important. As human beings, momentum is our best friend. What's going to happen organically is when you start to do 20 minutes a day of walking or three exercises a day of whatever the hell you find on YouTube, you don't have to force it. Your body, the way we are designed, we are pleasure-seeking creatures, So when your body feels how good those 20 minutes feel or how good those three exercises feel, it's going to naturally say, what else can I do? What else can I do? 
and then you'll add 10 more minutes or you'll add another exercise or you'll add one more day of a week in the gym. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We don't have to think about that yet because that part is going to happen organically. That's the snowball effect and you have no control over that. Your body's going to want that no matter what because it wants to feel good. Your job is to find what feels comfortable, what feels realistic, what feels doable for you and start. And once you start, you understand there's going to be days you crush it and there's going to be days you totally suck. And as long as you keep going, you will be successful. Now, there's an element of trust to all this. If you've been working out for years and you've had your nutrition in check for years, it's a lot easier for you to say, listen, I'm going to go on vacation for a week. I'm not going to touch a dumbbell. I'm not going to think about what I eat. I'm going to enjoy every minute. And I know that when I get back, I'll be right back on my game. That's a lot easier to say if you've done that before, right? If, you, if every year you take this week off to go on vacation and you know yourself well enough to know when you get back, it's no big deal to get back on. But if you're new to this, if this is your first time taking a vacation, it's totally normal to have those thoughts of, well, after a week, what if I lose my momentum, right? What if I've rewired my brain that I've just formed new habits and now when I get back, I'm starting from scratch and I've just lost all that momentum and I've lost some of the muscle that I've gained and our mind starts spiraling out. And what happens? Once again, we feel out of control. We get into this all in, all out mindset. This takes time. This takes trust in yourself. But here's the beautiful part. You get to practice every day. Every single time that you make a decision that's not all in, all out, you are building trust with yourself. Every time you eat that donut and get right back to your nutrition goals without spiraling out, trust. Every time you miss a workout and get right back in the next day, trust. And by the time it happens where you take that big vacation, yeah, you're still going to be nervous about it. There's still going to be some fear around it. But you are the one that's in control. You are the one that gets to make the choice that when you get back, even if it is a little hard in the first couple of days to get back into the swing of things, even if there is a period where you have to push to get that momentum back, you are the one making that choice. And every single time you make the choice to get right back on with your goals, you build trust. And what's going to happen naturally, what's going to happen over the course of time and consistency is you are going to learn to trust the process and you are going to learn to trust yourself. And every single time an opportunity comes up, whether that opportunity is a slice of pizza or a two-week vacation, you are going to build that trust in yourself that this is a lifestyle. This is something that you're dedicated to. This is something you can step away from when you need to, that you can come back to, that you, that you understand is never, ever, ever going to be about perfection. But what it is about is time and consistency, and you 1,000% can do that. For more information on MindStrong Fitness, visit www.mindstrongfitness.com.